In this video, we're going to take a look at Autodesk Inventor's assembly and management capabilities. So here I have the Loader Assem Manage IAM from our working files directory. And essentially, we can see that there's a bunch of parts here that are put together into this design. What I want to do is check for a few things here now that I have everything together, such as if there's interferences or check for a range of movement, perhaps even get a build material or a list of all the components so I can easily export that to build materials for SAP or different procurement systems. So what I have here right now is I'm going to look at the interference between a few of these parts. Because Inventor is a solid modeler, it will look at the design and see if there's things that are overlapping together that don't necessarily need to be overlapping. Nothing is more frustrating than building a design and then trying to prototype it and then finding out later in the shop that something doesn't quite fit up right. So this is the whole idea around digital prototyping and making sure something works before it ever gets built. I'm going to begin by looking at the Inspect tab at the top of the screen. And I'm going to choose this command called Analyze Interference. Here I'll just quickly pick a few components. And then I can choose OK here, or I can right click and choose OK. Now this shows me I have an interference detected with a certain volume. If I zoom in down here, it's actually this highlighted red that I'm getting as an overlap. Sometimes an overlap is OK if you have a press fit operation, or if you have a threaded engagement going on, that's OK. Some of this other stuff here where I know it's very minimal, such as this area on the nut screw right here. Maybe I don't care too much about that because I know it's not really going to exist that way. But it gives you the ability to check those interferences. So I'm going to say OK to that. And as soon as I scroll my mouse wheel or if I zoom a little bit, that highlight will go away. Next thing I want to look at is range of motion. So here on this bucket, I want to see it go up and down. I want to see what current state that it's at. Is this going to be my state of rest, a 45 degree incline on this bucket, or do I want it to be lowered? I'll go ahead and find the long slot runner in my tree over here, and I can see these geometric assembly constraints have been applied to it. Here I have an angle of negative 45 degrees. This is actually controlling the height or the elevation of this bucket based on this change of 45 degrees. If I change this to something like, let's say, negative 90. Now I'm doing that just by having this highlighted and then typing in down here on my screen. Now I'll go ahead and hit enter. And I can see that will change the update to negative 90 for me. If I come back here and make that zero degrees, that should bring the bucket back down. Maybe I want that to be my resting position. You can also come in here and drive the value. So maybe I want to show the range of movement in a video to take to sales or to take to a manager to show how the range of movement will actually take place. I can right click on that angle constraint and choose an option called drive. From here, I can drive the value from a starting value of zero to an ending value of negative 90. And I'll go ahead and just play this in reverse order because it's going to a negative value. And that will show the bucket going up and down. I can play that forward and backwards, and I can also record that out. But it gives me a better visual tool to show somebody how something will adjust or move inside my designs. Next up, maybe I want to get a nice bill of material out of here. I want to order this. I want to get a Excel list of components or a common delimited set of components and then take that over to my purchasing department. Or perhaps I just want to have a good way to look at all my components at once and make some changes to them. So I can do that by going to the Manage tab, and I'll look at my Build Material command. So by looking at Build Material, I can see the part number of the component, the name of the component, sometimes the same as the part number. I can see a thumbnail of that. I can see what quantity it is, the stock number, the description, the current revision. I can add and remove columns from here as well. What it gives me is the ability to see everything that makes up this design because these are all referenced in parts or perhaps maybe some sub-assemblies. If I scroll down here, I can see the tire is actually a sub-assembly being brought in, which has its own two parts inside of that. So I can basically make a nice export here with this export build materials command, which is the very first tool on this title bar of my build material window. It gives me that ability to extract all that data about this file that I want. So as I make changes to parts, it can actually see all those changes taking effect into my build material and I can get a more accurate bill updated. I don't have to keep modifying it in multiple places. So it keeps everything nice and intact in the way I want to see it. This has been a look at some of the assembly and management capabilities of Autodesk Inventor.